Hello guys, Winston here. I've got a quick little widget to share this week. My next project has a partially hollowed out dome shape that I need to machine which will require some custom work holding. There won't be enough surface area to use double sided tape, external clamping is out of the question, and internal clamping would require making something like a spreader clamp but in vice form, which I could probably actually 3D print something to perform that function, but I'm not quite that desperate yet because I'm thinking there's a simpler and more flexible option, a vacuum chuck. You may recall long ago I was sent these Rockler vacuum pods, and while they were super convenient if you have large flat pieces that you want to quickly slap down on your CNC or workbench, they don't provide repeatable XY positioning unless you have some sort of mechanical stop external to the fixtures. Plus, they just don't work well for small parts like what I'll be making. But I really like the concept of these things, and I thought I could take the idea one step further. Here's the plan. Step 1, design a block with a cavity to distribute vacuum pressure over a certain surface area. Step 2, manually drill a hole in the side to be tapped for NPT threads. This will be the vacuum port. Step 3 is to affix an MDF layer on top of the main block and machine in some locating features. MDF is porous enough that you can pull a vacuum through it, and you see this on a lot of high-end CNC routers that will accommodate 4x8 foot sheets of material. Here I'll use that property to apply uniform suction to the dome that I need to machine, and use that rectangular boss to prevent lateral shifting of the workpiece. This feature will need to be machined last as I'll be locating my stock off of it. On the CNC, I use double-sided tape to hold down a brick of HDPE. I'm also using clamps from the sides to handle the lateral cutting forces so that the double-sided tape doesn't need to work as hard. I'm starting with a quarter-inch three-flute cutter here. This one is from X-Edge, and aside from the chip breakers, which are nice to have, what I'm most interested in is the low helix angle flutes. Low helix cutters impart very little vertical force on the workpiece, which is something you really want with less rigid workholding methods like double-sided tape. I'm doing an adaptive clear at 120 inches per minute, a 0.3 inch maximum step down, and a 0.025 inch optimal load. RPM is somewhere between 12 to 16,000, I really didn't look too closely and I wasn't too worried about it. Partway through this toolpath I realized that my clamps were somewhat precariously positioned, so I paused my program to make some adjustments. I also pulled off the brushes on the dust chute since I was cutting a little too low to use them, and I also wanted better visibility. After a successful roughing operation, I swapped to an 8th inch single flute end mill that my buddy Chris necked down on a grinder. This allows me to cut deeper than half an inch without the shank of the tool smearing HDPE chips across my walls. I bored a couple holes that I needed for attaching the vacuum chuck body to my table, and for attaching my MDF interface to the chuck. With all my machined features done, I pulled the body of the chuck off the table and finished up the rest of the features by hand. First, I needed to drill out the vacuum port. I'll be sticking a quarter inch NPT fitting in here which I have laying around, which has a threaded part that's really much larger in diameter than a quarter inch. I probably could have gotten away with an eighth inch NPT, but quarter inch was what I was used to working with. I punched a 7 16 inch hole through the side of my HDPE block, and then awkwardly threaded it while holding the tap in some pliers. I don't have a tap wrench large enough to handle a quarter inch NPT tap. Once I verified that my barbed fitting fits snugly, I tap four holes in the body for quarter 20 hardware. Next, I cut out an MDF plate to put on top of the HDPE. It's just a simple 3x5 inch rectangle with some counterboard holes. The HDPE block gets bolted to my table and the MDF gets bolted to the HDPE. I didn't record this, but the side that's face down was sanded. The outer faces of MDF boards are compressed and sealed to retain that smooth surface. It's less permeable than the inner material, so to draw a vacuum through it effectively you need to shave off that outer skin. I machined the mounting features for my cylindrical stock, and here I included a little extra relief around the perimeter. Because I want to create a hemisphere on this fixture, I need to allow a ball and mill to overshoot the bottom edge of my stock so that the nearly vertical boundary of the hemisphere can be touched by the vertical edges of my end mill. Once this was done, I also drilled a tiny 16th inch hole through the middle of the MDF by hand. Air will be pulled through my MDF from all sides, so providing a path of least resistance will maximize the effectiveness of this vacuum chuck. Since I expect the majority of the vacuum pressure to be acting within this cavity under my stock, I want to allow the air to be able to flow out of this space as easily as possible. And before you inquire or suggest it, yes, I could improve my vacuum pressures by sealing the exposed edges and faces of my MDF, 
And no, I didn't care enough to do it because I was too impatient to wait for anything to dry as I wanted to try out this contraption right now. In fact, I was so impatient that I didn't even consider whether or not I would have enough clearance to use this thing with a 75mm thick puck of wood on top of it. I drilled a shallow hole with my end mill in the center point of the fixture so I could relocate my zero after moving it to the front of the machine. As long as I'm within about 3 to 4 thou of the actual center, it's good enough for me. Now I have enough clearance that I can test this fixture. In case you're wondering, I'm using the vacuum pump that came with the Rockler setup. It's manufactured by GAST and designed for extended operation. Cheaper pumps that require oil to run tend to overheat with prolonged use. And the verdict is, it's not bad. I can put at least 5 to 10 pounds of vertical force on my stock without any risk of it separating from the vacuum truck. And laterally, it's rock solid. If I had machined an interface out of HDPE instead of MDF and integrated an O-ring into the surface, I could definitely achieve a higher vacuum pressure. But this level of suction should be more than adequate for my needs. There's a lot of room to improve this setup, but for proof of concept and some light use, I think it's pretty great. Pairing a vacuum truck like this with a downcutting end mill will all but ensure success. I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I'll be back soon with more CNC content, DIY nonsense, and the reveal of the completed project of what this part goes into.